everybody, Jem Schofield here, and I'm with Matt. How are you, Matt? I'm good, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Here we are in uh, your neck of the woods in Brooklyn. Yes. Overlooking Manhattan. It's a beautiful scene. Beautiful scene, a loud scene, but a beautiful scene. And today we're talking about what? Today we're talking about tripod systems and uh, operating and balancing them. Which is very, very important when you're shooting video. Absolutely. In fact, we talk all about, you know, using handheld rigs and shoulder mounted rigs and jibs and cranes and dollies and all of the sliders. And all of those things are great for special shots. Right. But what we really use in 80 to 90, sometimes 95% of the stuff that we do is a tripod. Is a tripod and a good quality tripod system. Yep. So, what is a tripod system? What are the parts that make up? that well, system. There's basically two major components of a tripod system. There's the legs or the sticks as they're commonly referred yep. and the head. Mm -hmm. And depending on the tripod system you're using you might have uh, different types of sticks. So these ones are you know maybe a little bit more like what people who come from a stills background would use, mm -hmm. right? Right. These There's no spreader. Yep. They're all um, adjustable here at the, the connection point for the legs. Right. And what's great about this is it allows you to get either nice and skinny so you can go tall and go high, or you can flatten them out and get really low. So you have a lot of versatility in the height of your tripod. So then you can get those really low shots and those really high shots. Exactly. And, um, and then over here we have a different set of sticks and this one has a mid-level spreader mm -hmm. and then sometimes we see a floor, floor spreader. spreader and those tripods are great because they create a little bit more stability right mm -hmm. yeah it, you can uh, especially if you if it's windy or whatever you can put a sandbag on them it gives you a place to do that yeah um, but it also yeah it just keeps keeps the legs from splaying out more so that once you get your position set then you know it's not going to change by instability in the legs. Got it. And so the other thing is these are both on a ball mount system, right? And both of these heads are 75 millimeter mm -hmm. bowls, but there's also a larger size, actually a couple of larger sizes. We see a 100 millimeter bowl and we see a 150 millimeter bowl for, for larger camera systems. But the reason we like to use these are why? Well, it makes it really easy to balance your camera. So you can see here that it's that it's, um, you can loosen it up yep. and you can easily find level on your head, lock that down, and now we're set to go. So if you're on an uneven surface, your tripod legs themselves don't have to be perfectly level. You can finite tune with just the head on the ball. Got it, okay. And then this system also has that as well. Mm -hmm. It exactly. makes it very, very easy to level it. And then um, really what we need to talk about is the heart of this whole system, which is the fact that both of these tripod heads are fluid heads. Exactly. And what does that mean? So basically with the fluid heads what there is is there's a series of ball bearings inside of this um, that allow you to increase or decrease the tension or the drag yep. on both the tilt and the pan. Yep. Um, and what this does is it allows you to have really either loose movement or you can really dial that in and have some nice fluid uh, drag so that you can, if you're on a long lens, you can get some nice slow movements on your head. Got it. Let's talk about this counterbalance system because now that we understand how the fluid component of the head works with the bearing system, there's also this spring based system and probably the most important part about how we balance a camera so that we can use all of the shot as opposed to getting that kickback or that spring back that we see happens and that whole thing that we've talked about in the past where you're fighting the camera right right I mean the whole point of these fluid head tripods is to have them work for you and not against you right so you might as well get it balanced properly so it does that all right so let's take a look at some of the options here and how this counterbalance works right so basically with counterbalance what this is doing is if on one extreme if it's all the way off yeah what it's doing is is the camera is just gonna float all the way to either extreme. Very floppy. So this is really not doing much for you. Right. If on the other extreme, what it's doing is now the kickback is so that it's always wanting to return back to center. Right, which occasionally you might want. Exactly, and either one of those, they're useful in certain situations. But when properly balancing your camera, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get it to a spot where when you let go of the camera, it stays. So when you let go of the camera, it stays. Right, so we're seeing a little bit of spring back so the first thing we have to do is make sure that it's balanced on the actual plate itself. Right. And then, and then we really want to get it so that it's perfect, right? Exactly. Let's like, take a look at how to do that then. So on most of these um, tripod systems that we're dealing with, 
uh, what we have is this top plate that slides forward and back. Right. Um, and this is where you really start to do um, the beginning stages of your tripod balancing. Got it. And what you're going to want to do to really fine tune that is go ahead and turn your counterbalance off. Right. And start walking this into a position where the camera is not wanting to tilt forward or back. Got it. So you get it to a point where it's going to stay. There it is. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that down. And I should also note that we want to take any drag off of the off tilt. as well. So yes. we take everything off of the counterbalance. And so we're not engaging the spring. Right. And we're also taking any drag off of it while we do this step. Exactly. OK. Because if it's, if it's balanced completely loose, imagine what it's going to do for you once you start dialing in your tension and your counterbalance. Right. And now from this point, now we're going to go ahead and dial in our counterbalance. Now you're at a one, but and there's the zero. Yeah. And then what happens when you go to a two I with this particular? Two. So now it's holding in every position. Got so it. So now our camera is properly balanced. Got it. So now no matter what we do, it's staying where it is, and we're not seeing that spring back. And that's what we want. That's the starting point of doing that. Once we have it balanced like this with the counterbalance system, now we can dial in that drag or that tension right. and we can get exactly the type of action that we want out of that fluid head. Right. And that makes a huge difference. And, and so let's go ahead and show people where you can actually dial in that. So you've got two places to dial in that drag. Right. So on this, on this particular head, yep. um, we've got our uh, tilt drag here. Yep. And it goes basically till from one until nine. Yep. So this is full drag. So it's nice and tight, but it's good if you're doing a nice smooth move yep and then we have the same thing on the bottom of the tripod here that i can turn and increase that drag as well for the pan for the pan got exactly. it exactly so then that way when you dial in that drag you get exactly the type of action that you want for the type of shot that you're looking for so we can have that floaty shot that we talked about earlier with less drag right. or we can dial that tension in and have more drag and then you know more resistance exactly. and that's great for those slow pans you're talking about using a long lens and things like that right right so um, same thing on here. You can drop the counterbalance on this. You can drop the drag. You can balance your system. And each tripod system is slightly different, but the basic concept is the same. Get it so that it doesn't move at, with the right counterbalance setting, and then you can go ahead and dial in your drag. Exactly. So I think that what we should do to just end off is take a look at a shot that you guys did earlier on We've got this beautiful skyline here. Mm -hmm. We've got boats passing by. And just take a look at a tracking shot where we start with the camera in a stationary position. We start to pan the camera. There might be a little bit of tilting in that shot. I don't even remember the shot. <laughs> and then stopping the camera and then taking up that move again. Right. And that with a properly balanced tripod system, we can do that. We can use the whole shots. Exactly. Thanks very much, man. Great. Thank you.